Snow Tracks is sponsored by ski -Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. Over the years, Snow Tracks Television and Super Tracks Magazine have helped promote numerous contests for snowmobile OEMs. We've given away sleds, vacations, and tons of riding gear on behalf of our sponsors. Truth is, we've made a lot of people really happy. Congratulations, Doug. It's gonna be awesome to go ride with you today. I hope you're excited. Speechless. Part of the prize package was an all expense paid trip to Thief River Falls to actually meet and ride with Tucker Hibbert. I'd like to present you your ZR6000 RR. Thank you, Kale. Along with winning a brand new Arctic Cat ZR6000 RR, Matt won an all expense paid trip to Thief River Falls, Minnesota to ride with Team Arctic Racers and yours truly. <laughs> The 12 winners received all expense paid trips to Colorado to ride the new 2014 RMKs with Chris Barant. The pro himself gave them some backcountry tips and the whole experience was featured on a Snow Tracks television episode. I just happened to be on my way home from work one day and, and I got a phone call and, and it was a funny area code and the person on the other end of the line was um, Mark Lester, and I, I recognized his voice right away from Snow Tracks television. I immediately, I began to shake. <laughs> Jeff won a 2015 Arctic Cat snowmobile and was featured in Arctic Cat's 2016 new model photo shoot, as well as a special segment on Snow Tracks TV. How's it going? Long time no see, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yep. Welcome out. Wow. Our 2016 contest winners received custom Arctic Cat 8000s and a trip to ride with Rob Kincaid, Dave McClure, and Luke in West Yellowstone, Montana. Contests usually require filling out ballots, taking them to a local dealer, and depositing them for entry. That's the way contests work. About 18 months ago, Skidoo came to us here at Super Track Snow Tracks and asked us to figure out a different way to involve and engage snowmobilers. So on went our thinking helmets as we began to explore new ideas to get you, our valuable Snow Tracks viewers and Super Tracks magazine readers, involved in a new kind of contest. Actually, the idea we came up with was anything but a contest. The idea was so different and so unique, there was only one thing we could call it, a competition. At Heydays, just over a year ago, we launched what was to become the most successful, highest participated in multimedia competition the power sport biz had ever witnessed. Luke and AJ took to the stage at the Skidoo display on a September Saturday afternoon at Heydays in northern Minnesota and launched a competition that would become a sensation the North America's Top Snowmobiler Competition. Super Tracks Magazine and Snow Tracks Television in collaboration with Skidoo are on the hunt to find North America's Top Snowmobiler. All you guys gotta do is go to supertracksmag.com forward slash N-A-T-S. Skidoo loved the idea of engaging snowmobilers while bringing their personalities to the table, showing their dedication, participation, and commitment to the sport. finished what I call my skinny I'm no pro. The result we got with the engagement we saw with North America's top snowmobiler is well above our expectation and just confirms the level of engagement of the passionate snowmobiling community. From the nominations and the voting on those nominations. I broke the world record for most miles on a snowmobile in 24 hours. America's top snowmobiler. This is my playground, and I am North America's top No, 
I have a funny accent, vote for me. Thank you very much. Kevin, wake up. Waiter's coming. Time to train. Let's go. Snow Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race inspired, trail proven. Things really got crazy last year when North America's top snowmobiler competitors reached out to their local media, including radio, television, and newspaper, in an effort to get more exposure and ultimately more votes. One of the exceptional extra benefits with last year and this year's North America's top snowmobiler competition is the ability for voters to win great prizes just for voting. Every time you vote in this year's North America's top snowmobiler competition, you're entered into a draw for cool accessories like BRP helmets, Makita power tools, Cyclops cameras, Woody's traction and control stuff, super clamp products, and other sweet swag. As the weeks rolled by last fall, the cream rose to the top, figuratively speaking. It became clear there was an elite group of nominees who were working their social media connections to the max. The voting became so intense, everyone around here was shocked. As we neared the final round, a couple really strong candidates emerged who were not only outgoing, friendly, and entertaining, but knew how to get their social media connections buzzing. Troy Burt and Matthew Corbet engaged in a seesaw battle, which was nothing short of epic. Incredibly, when the snow dust settled, one snowmobiler emerged head and shoulders above all the other nominees. It was none other than Newfoundland, Canada's Troy Burt. His story was incredible, and his journey had taken him to death's door. Troy survived a catastrophic motorcycle accident while working in the oil industry near Fort McMurray, Alberta, eight years ago. In his early 20s, Troy was broadsided by a car which ran a red light, and he was left to die on the pavement. Uh, by a big truck. Wrong place, wrong time. I broke my neck in four places, titanium plates, bruised spinal cord, fused vertebrae. I can't feel my hands real good. My shoulders are kind of funny. Cracked skull, dead at the scene of my accident, two blown knees, all my ribs broke, and I lost my left foot and an eight inch of my leg. I still ride, I ride damn good. <laughs> but here, don't look at my legs, you kicking around no grads. Troy's story was so compelling, votes literally poured in for him from across the North American snow belt in the final rounds of the North America's top snowmobiler competition. Troy's story was even more amazing in that he was able to return to extreme mountain riding, something his doctors told him he would never do again. Troy's story and his savvy management of social media pumped up the total number of North America's top snowmobiler votes cast in the competition past 130,000. The impact the contest had on snowmobile social media was profound. To the point, Troy gets recognized just walking around events like heydays this past September. Well, this was an incredible experience. I can't express how thankful I am for Super Tracks and Ski Doo. This is an unbelievable experience. Part of the amazing prize package awarded to Troy was his choice of any 2017 Skidoo snowmobile and an all expense paid trip to Club Skidoo last winter held in Dallas, Texas. Troy met BRP CEO and Power Sports visionary Jose Boisjoli face to face. Boisjoli was, as he always is, completely down to earth and actually wanted to hear Troy's story and treated him like snowmo royalty. To say Troy was overwhelmed is an understatement. It was a once in a lifetime experience. In case you're wondering, Troy chose a 2017 G4 Summit 850 153X for his grand prize. The entire Nats experience turned out to be the biggest snowmobile social media promotion ever. This year's North America's top snowmobiler competition has been in full swing since October. Log on to www.supertracksmag.com forward slash Nats to vote for your favorite nominee and become eligible to win sweet prize packages every week. This year, there's a new twist to the competition. It's all about your country, USA versus Canada. The competition has been crazy and it's coming down to the final round very soon. 
It'll be all about one snowmobiler, either an American or a Canadian, being crowned North America's top snowmobiler. The big question is this, will it be an American or a Canadian who is crowned 2017's North America's top snowmobiler? Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. Experience a ride you'll never forget. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Snow bikes have been the newest craze when it comes to big altitude exploring over the past few years. And during that time, we've had some experience on a few different variations, but never bikes of our own and never at sea level, until now that is. If you remember back a few weeks, with the help of Luke, I converted our Yamaha 450FX from wheels to paddles with a shiny new 2017 Timbersled LE kit. Fully tricked out with the upgraded Fox QS3 front and rear arm shocks, as well as the Timbersled TSS air shock under the seat, taking our total rear end travel numbers up to 20 inches and making our first venture into snow biking more than just testing the waters, but pretty much going in head first. Our Yamaha FX mounted up to the Timber Sled LE is pretty much one of the most potent packages that you can buy in the market today. But there's still a few things that I want before I ride. Utilizing our friends at Kimpex, it wasn't long before a fresh box of snow bike accessories arrived at my door. And the first thing I find to be a must have is a new set of ultra wide foot pegs. My FXR boots are so much larger than MX boots, it's hard to get a good planted feel with the stock narrow MX pegs. So I went with a DRC hardware and their new wide peg in a low negative five millimeter design. They add huge grip and more importantly, confidence when tearing up the fresh snow. Now, when we're out in the fresh snow on a snow bike, it's no surprise that an MX bike doesn't have any hot grips. And while I can stop every few minutes to heat my hands up on the pipe, I don't want to do that. I'm out there to ride, so there's got to be a better answer. Oxford heaters make hot grip kits for just about everything you can imagine, from ATVs to all disciplines of motorcycle riding. I picked the premium Adventure Series heaters for 7 8 inch bars. These heaters are sealed, the control is watertight, and they draw less than four amps. And that's a huge plus, seeing as the battery on this FX is not very big. With the five heat settings available, I won't be stopping to warm up, and I won't have to wear heavy gloves to keep my digits moving. This is not only a smart idea for comfort, the Oxford brand knows how to make a comfortable and controlled grip surface, while also keeping wires from fraying. Now, while I'm up here at the handlebars, there's a couple of obvious additions that if you're going out snow biking, you need to have. The first of which being a good quality set of bark busters. Snow bike riding is in the trees and it can get pretty tight at times. A good quality set of bark busters like these Zeta products armor are important to keep your hands safe, but when you link them with the matching armor hand guards, you know you have more than just safety, but also wind blockage. The bark busters are all aluminum and come in a variety of colors, as do the plastic guards. The second piece to the front end is a light. Because this is an FX, not a WR, we do have a battery, but we do not have a light. Kimpex supplied me with a very sturdy, all aluminum, nine inch wide, slim LED with mounting hardware. This light bar is small enough to stay out of the way, but packs a lot of punch with a color temp of 6,500K and 30 watts of total draw. Now, because we're gonna be pulling some decent wattage from the FX's already small battery, I'm gonna be riding on some cold days and in some remote locations, there's one thing that I'm not gonna leave home without having in my mountain pack. And that piece is a lithium smart jump starter. Kimpex makes a line of jump starters and this particular one is 600 amps and comes in a nice little zippered carry case. If you wanna ditch the case and just take the essentials, it only weighs 1.7 pounds and is nothing short of a lifesaver, considering it will not only jumpstart the bike, but also recharge your phone or sports cam. And because it's a safe starter, you can't make a mistake when you're hooking it up. It's safe and it's smart. There are a lot of options out there for you to upgrade your snow bike. Sure, you could ride it stock, but for me, I want to enjoy my ride as much as possible. And all of these accessories do just that for me and so much more. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. A year ago, there were quite a few folks chomping at the bit for the release of the Switchback Assault in the Axis platform. It didn't happen, 
but pretty much everybody knew that that was only gonna be one season away. And here we have it, the shiny new 2017 Polaris Switchback Assault in the chassis that does it complete and total justice, the Axis. It's lean, it's mean, and it's one top-notch assault on everything off-trail, with a good amount of on-trail goodness thrown into the mix. The days of the Renegade Backcountry X having a stranglehold on the flatland off-trail category are over, and there's a new kid in town. Sure, the old Switchback Assault was a good sled, but pretty much everybody knew that the Renegade Backcountry X was better in almost every way. But the Axis puts a whole new spin on that. Not only is it lighter, not only is it stronger, it's far, far more usable because of the innovation and ingenuity of the Polaris engineers. And probably one of the biggest new improvements for this new sled is the rear suspension, because truth is, the old 144-inch uncoupled design wasn't winning any awards for its on-trail manners. There's always a compromise when you're looking for the best off-trail capabilities. And up to this point, it's been ride quality, but Polaris is looking to change that perception. Utilizing a longer front torque arm from the Pro XC rear skid frame, they've been able to do just that. Even with the 144-inch track out back, the sled rides on trail like a 136 and delivers incredible bump-absorbing capabilities. While it seems like a small change to make this kind of improvement, you'll be blown away with how much different this sled rides. And while the on-trail manners are exceptional, in no way has this deterred from its off-trail whale. And ain't that what it's all about when you go assault? I mean, this is a sled you order when you want to throw down and let loose. This is a flatland sled to dangle with. And in axis form, you shall dangle. Putting the rider's hands along with the seat and knees 4.5 inches forward, as well as your feet two inches ahead, you truly are in the attack position that's utterly centralized and balanced. You can make even the most minute change in your weight distribution and positioning on the sled, and the sled reacts. It truly is an incredible chassis for slaying it off trail. Obviously, the rider positioning isn't the only thing allowing you to tear it up. No, the Clean Fire 800 is also doing its part in adding to the adrenaline rush. A lightweight throttle body, V-Force reeds, super efficient intake and exhaust, three-stage electronic exhaust valves, grooved pistons, electronic oil pump, and a thermostat bypass to help get the engine up to temp 40% quicker all work harmoniously together to deliver what we think is one heavy hitting 800 motor. And thanks to the crank that's 2.5 pounds lighter than previous Assault 800s, it spools way faster, giving the lift that you want with immediate throttle response. Lower rotating mass means you're going to get the power you want right from first input, and that power continues clean and crisp right to full shift. And while I'm using all of that extra power and spool, I'm not oblivious to the fact that this sled is significantly lighter than its predecessor. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 pounds lighter, thanks to all the saving benefits of the Axis chassis. It took 93% new parts to make an Axis, and it just plain works in the Assault. However, there is one area that I'm not totally sold on, and that is the front suspension. I am a fan of the geometry, ride quality on trail, and looks, but I think when it comes to this level of off-trail sled, the Walker shocks that have been designed for light weight should be ditched and a more aggressive and beefier shock should be used. Also something that says premium and different, more like the XRS package from Skidoo. If it were up to me, I would love to see a shock like the Elka Stage 4 I put on my 2016 SKS. They are much beefier and far better built with a focus on performance gain, not weight loss. After a full season of enjoyment with my 2016 SKS, I've truly found a special place in my heart for the Axis chassis. And I think that you're gonna be equally enamored with the all new Switchback Assault. It's not each individual upgrade or change that makes this an impressive snowmobile, both on and off trail. It's truly the sum of all parts that makes it a winner for me. You have to be able to blend together so much technology and engineering finesse to make what might just be the perfect snowmobile. You gotta be light, but strong. You have to deliver exceptional handling, but also comfortable ergonomics. And I really think Polaris has been able to deliver on all fronts, not because they are the weight winners, but because they truly take all aspects into account 
and it makes what might just be the perfect boondocking sled. How long that'll stand truly depends on the competition, but with Skidoo not having an off-trail boondocking G4850 for 2017, I can confidently say that this snowmobile is at the top of its game. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. Art to Cat. Share our passion. And by Northwest Ontario. What are you doing this weekend? If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.